Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video on set theory, we're going to talk about the cardinality of a set. So there's two ways we can say it. We can say the cardinal number or the cardinality. The cardinal number or the cardinality of a finite set is the unique number of elements in the set. The notation we use is it looks like function notation, so it's n of a, where a is a set. So if we see n of set a, that's asking us how many elements are there in set a. Let's look at some examples. So we want to find the cardinal number of each set. Set B, we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we would say the cardinality, or n of B, is equal to 6. Set P, we have 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4. When we list the cardinality, remember it's unique. So we only list, or we would only consider 1, 2, 3, and 4 to be unique because the 2, 3, and 4 all repeat. So we would say that the cardinality or the cardinal number of set P is 4. Here this says that we have a set and it's the empty set. So the cardinality of set N, the number of elements in set N, is 0. Set M, on the other hand, there is a set and it's the set containing the empty set or the null set. And that is an element now. It's considered an element because it's inside the braces. So in this case, the cardinality of set M is 1. And it just so happens that that one element is the empty set or the null set. Set E, we're not given all the information. You'll notice the dot, dot, dot in the middle means that the pattern continues and then it goes up until 22. We might recognize these as the even numbers. So how many even numbers are there between 2 and 22? Well, you could just sit there and count, or you could say, well, I know every other number is even from 1 to 22, so there must be 11 of them. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then you can count. 1, 2, 3, 8 would be 4, 10 would be 5, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. And there we have it. The cardinality of set E is 11. Let's look at the difference between finite and infinite sets. A finite set is a set that has cardinality. The last five sets we just looked at, those all were finite sets, right? They all had cardinality. An infinite set is a set that contains an infinite number of elements. So the super well-known subsets of real numbers, R, Z, Q, and N, those are all infinite, therefore they do not have cardinality. Okay, so is the set finite or infinite? The set of odd numbers. So that's the first one here, a little one by it. So the set of odd numbers, can we count the number of odd numbers? No, because if you try to tell me there's 300 of them, I can ask you to make a list and I'll tell you another one. So this would be an infinite set. And therefore it does not have cardinality. R is the set containing 3, 6, 9, so on and so forth, up to 102. Even though it has the dot, 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 we know that that just fills in the numbers, the, the multiples of 3, between 9 and 99. And this indicates to us that this is a finite set. This was 2. In this third one, we have x such that x is less than 0, and x is an integer, right? That z means integer. Uh, are there integers less than 0? Yes, there are. Are there a finite or infinite number? There are an infinite number. They just keep going. And the set of real numbers between 0 and 10. Well, the set of real numbers, that's everything. That's decimals, fractions, whole numbers irrational numbers, there would be an infinite number of numbers between 0 and 10. Okay, so we're going to wrap up all of the terminology we've seen in set theory thus far, including previous videos. So we're going to think about the positive multiples of 4. First, let's give this set a name. Uh, I'm going to use M for multiple, uh, just a single capital letter. P would be fine, F would be fine, really whatever you want, just usually we don't use U. Write the set all three ways. Okay, so remember the three ways. The first way is the listing method. So we would say m is equal to the positive multiples of 4 would start at 4, 8, 12, and then we're going to say dot, dot, dot. That's way 1. Way 2, if we use set builder notation, we would say x is an element of set m such that, and now we have to be really careful about how we do this. So we're going to say x is equal to 4 times a natural number. And what that's doing is it's going to take all the natural numbers 
and it's going to multiply them by 4, and that's going to give us the multiples of 4. The natural numbers start with 1, so that's going to start this set at 4, so that works out well. Okay, and our third way is word form, so we would say the set of positive multiples of 4. Kind of just repeats the directions, doesn't it? Multiples of 4. Oh, whoops. I see I did it all backwards, so here we're going to mix and match here. There's listing, there's set, there's word. Is the set well defined? So if you asked 100 mathematicians, would they all give you the exact same set? Yes, they would. The positive multiples of 4 are very well established. So yes, the set is well defined. Is the set finite or infinite? Well, you can see here I put that triple dot indicating that it's going to keep going on and on and on. There is no largest multiple of 4, so this is an infinite set. Therefore, it does not have cardinality. We're going to fill in the blank. 1,148. So the question is, is this an element of the set or is it not? Is 1,148 a positive multiple of 4? Yes, it is. So we would say, is an element of, I called my set M. And now, what's something that's not an element of my set, which we can say M? And we just need to pick something. It could be anything. It could be a number. So I could say, I could even get fancy and say 0 because 0 is not positive. It could just say cat. Cat is not an element of my set. It's not a multiple of 4. Anything you want. And that's it. Thank you for stopping by.